Uh, this is actually a, a more gentle int introduction, so won't be showing too much code. First of all, I want to uh, thank the, um, the sp our sponsors. I'm Rob Sierra. I'm a business owner, a company, uh, Holoncom. I've tried to add value uh, since 1993 where I was one of the only people who could, uh, like the most of us here, uh, could uh, understand these little tags where you create websites from, so we could add value there. And once everyone figured that one out, we, uh, we were using Dreamweaver, and after that, uh, when everybody had an illegal copy of Dreamweaver, we had a CMS. Uh, but also, in my opinion, those days are over. Uh, everybody has a CMS now. And um, for my personal situation, uh, the adding value is more in uh, software development now. But actually, we've got a real great tool uh, uh, at our hands. It, uh, sometimes we really have the impression we, we never need anything else. I mean, is it a CMS, is it an application framework? Well, actually, it's both. Uh, it really depends a little bit. Are you a content manager or software developer? Uh, then you have the power users, content managers, that slowly, because of the learning curve uh, that we have in DNN, um, and, and the internet, of course, uh, some content managers become power users. Uh, um, so it's a, it's a very versatile tool. Uh, um, you just create a page, place an HTML module on it, which is content, add some uh, permissions, and the content manager is, uh, is up and running. Uh, and if the module is not there, you just buy one and the same, and there you can add not only content but some functionality, set permissions, and off you go. If that's not enough, you can create your, your own modules. Um, even that is, there is support for that uh, uh, outside of Visual Studio. And, um, and even software developers use this approach sometimes to, to get things done. And that all drives, we're used to that kind of productivity. It, it all drives productivity. Um, and then some years ago uh, to, uh, I call them here power modules started uh, to appear, which are quite famous, where you can uh, add your, define your content schema, uh, then you uh, uh, create the template and off and running. So it's, it's a really very powerful tool still. Uh, that's why uh, after all these years, we're still here. And the basic uh, driving force, in my opinion, of that, uh, that versatility is, the, is some unique features in the architecture. Um, nothing special in the sense that there are users with roles and there are pages with modules. But do notice that the permissions are linked to the modules, not to the roles. Um, and the skinning engine. I, uh, um, in my search, uh, I remember very vividly my search for uh, a CMS of my choice. I noticed that the skinning, the flexibility of the skinning engine was uh, quite unique at that time, and I think it still, still is. Um, and if you look at other, other uh, uh, CMSs which, uh, or, or application frameworks, which of course we all do sometimes, you see they have a slightly different focus, more technical sometimes, uh, which uh, is, is appealing, MVC, or sometimes the data types are, are much more built in um, without paying thousands of, uh, of dollars. Uh, but that's, they just don't have that broad, that broad uh, scope. They can't handle that broad scope of, uh, of, of use cases. Uh, I think that's one of the reasons that it's still there. And, uh, if we don't watch out, we will be using it forever. Um, but what about as a developer then? What about new technologies? And I'm just stating here a few. Um, Bootstrap, FlexGrid or CSS Grid on the front end, uh, SignalR, 
promises a single weight, uh, all those fancy stuff. Well, of course, a real developer don't need don't need fancy stuff to create added value. It just analy makes good and anal he analyzes business situations and and comes up with a uh, affordable and a working solution. Um, but yeah, there are, there are all these buzzwords and and. But even that is no problem. I mean, you can still uh, use and experiment uh, uh, any of those uh, features if you want uh, within DNN. So no, really, there's no reason to uh, to get rid of, of DNN. And what about serious software development? Now, of course, what's in a name, of course. But I'm talking here. What if you have multiple? What, what if you need multiple permissions? Multiple permissions. Uh, due to the architecture, then you need multiple modules. Uh, um, and there you, you're much more on your own. I mean, there is not much support or help for, uh, for coordination between those, those modules. You, it's, it's, you all have to do it by hand, or you have to, of course, you can write code. Um, but uh, but coordination between modules of uh, URLs, permissions, and data, well, that's the, our framework doesn't really uh, help us with that. But anyway, we're there in the realm of uh, software development, so oh, we can do it all in code, of course. Um, but if you create a module like that, multi permission, a multi-module uh, application, and you want to deploy it, well, then you need a, uh, a manual saying, OK, first install, create these pages, or, or maybe you can write that in code and push this button, then these pages will be created. Uh, uh, all sort of, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's not, uh, it's becoming a little bit of a, of a struggle because uh, the, the, the the content manager uh, to whom you give the the module then needs to uh, to deploy the the stuff and there it gets a bit uh, bit weary. Uh, so, but anyway, uh, I said it already. Uh, even that a, a really uh, die-hard DNN uh, developer probably already has. All these, all solutions for these kind of problems, and uh, um, and if you lo wait long enough, then in the in the platform, uh, uh, some hooks might uh, appear that uh, make it uh, easier for you to create solutions for that. But anyway, let's be honest. At that point, you're really struggling a little bit. You're wrestling with the framework. I mean, it's it's not what it made was made for. It's a content management system. Um, And then there is .NET Core. Uh, Mitch said in his session this morning, well, smaller put, put, uh, footprint, cross-platform, better performance. It's the future of Microsoft. I don't know. Maybe we can do without it. I mean, of course, better performance is always nice, but cross-platform, smaller footprint, it's not really concerns that we have at the moment. So. No, no, DNN forever. Uh, although Andy uh, said we need new tech to attract young people. That co was quite one of the crucial elements in this analysis. And so then it's not only then uh, the, the concerns uh, doesn't matter only us. It also matters uh, maybe to attract other, other people. <laughs> Uh, Mitch says .NET Framework will be the next classic ASP uh, this morning. Found that a, a nice uh, phrase. Um, but still, I mean, there are still a lot of COBOL and Fortran uh, uh, developers, and they earn good money. So, I mean, it's a business model like, an, like another. Uh, there's no way to, to judge it. Uh, no, no, DNN forever. Uh, although also .NET Core, 
don't know if you remember .NET Framework. I remember it version one. We were all very excited and <laughs> a lot of people weren't used to it at that point. So a lot of people jumped in and there was a lot of uh, talk about how buggy it was. And, but all that disappeared at version two. Um, and, and then something, the, a stability came in there and then, then it, was, it went really, everybody started using it. Uh, version 3, I didn't mention it here, but it was uh, quite a long time after, after that. So, uh, and notice that you had a little bit the same uh, pattern this time, only we, we had some experience, so not everybody jumped in. Uh, and, and we had Daniel who jumped in for us and said, okay, be careful. Um, but now in August version 2 came in and you, in my opinion you um, feel again that, that stability. It's there, I mean I'm sure not everything is in there but um, it's, it's really very usable now and, uh, and because of their uh, release cycle which is uh, much faster now uh, and they, I mean they had uh, some increase in, in knowledge and experience. So .NET Core is not the future. I mean, it's it's in my opinion, it's now. Um, so basically, my point is, let's be honest. We really have a very strong tool at our hands. For 80% of the use cases, it's rock solid. If it's really, if you really start making applications, then okay, it's a little bit of a of a struggle. Uh, so it's still going strong, but maybe soon it will be in its whole obsolete. Well, uh, uh, as Cobalt and Fortran is obsolete, so it's, uh, it's all a matter of perspective. Are there any alternatives? But because be aware, and I've, I tried some, uh, some other uh, platforms, and, but you really very soon start missing some core features where you, you to whom you, you, you used to in, uh, in DNN. And the multi-tenant uh, user and role management which is quite good, the localization, scheduling, module events, uh, and there are a lot of small goodies there. Uh, also with the, with the settings that I remember that, there are a lot of settings there which once you go to another platform, ah, you immediately start missing them. Uh, um, um, we don't want to lose that. Uh, another CMS, mm, for me there is, no, there is no alternative at the moment. There really is no alternative. Mitch uh, said uh, he was... Um, uh, they were thinking of the, the, the working group was thinking about the smooth transition. Personally, I think it's too late. Then again, starting from scratch, sure, but, <coughs> but who will, who's going to do that? No, no, not an easy one. So, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit of uh, my uh, prag more pragmatic approach at, uh, at the moment. Um, and uh, if we're talking about .NET Core, of course, it's clear. I mean, we're talking about server-side code. I mean, there is no such thing as .NET Core client-side code. Client-side code is JavaScript, it's Node, it's the, that's, that's all, it's another uh, area. Um, and if we talk about .NET Core uh, modules, then you have three options, or we're talking about 100% server-side web forms. And, and if that's okay, then, then you have still have to use that. I mean, you can't, .NET Core can't help you there. Server-side MVC or server-side C-sharp uh, web APIs, that uh, approach, uh, that, that is the, the thing that you can do in, uh, in .NET Core. Um, and I just made a distinction here between uh, uh, the server-side MVC where you load a lot of, uh, with Razor or, or anything, you load a lot of HTML and at some points, 
because uh, a page refresh is too expensive, you start using uh, API calls to manipulate the DOM a little bit. That approach should be, uh, we don't use that anymore because there you really come into uh, uh, problems with state management on the client side. Um, so we completely went for a um, strict division where the server side uh, is only called by web APIs and the, and the client side is completely done in a, in a SPA module. We had uh, two use cases. Um, a very small use case was uh, a website, um, six languages. Um, they needed a registration form, just one form. Uh, action form probably could have done the job. I mean, action form can do a lot of jobs. So, uh, uh, but we knew that it would if it had to evolve in a complete uh, registration management tool in the long run. So, so this was for us our. Um, um, so we normally would use a, a, a one-module application, uh, but it would evolve in a multi-module application. So uh, for us, this use case was um, something that we wanted to handle differently. Another use case was uh, a product catalog. Can't, barely can call it a shop because there's no... Uh, not a real checkout, the checkout was, was just sending an email. Uh, two languages, user needed to log in, also the other application uh, user login was needed. And here the data uh, came from an uh, SAP backend. But all de also there, uh, there was a, um, already known that it would evolve in a, in a real uh, shop. And this is already a typical uh, a typical uh, multi-module app uh, that you would create. So what did we do? Apparently this approach has a name, Mitch calls this the hybrid uh, approach. Um, we made two websites, a different URL, uh, the core website is just a normal DNN, and there we have a, a Razer host module, um, which just does two things. It loads the JavaScript and the CSS from the other side. Um, and it has a diff, in our case, for a Vue.js app start. Could be a React app start. Uh, so very lightweight uh, module. And uh, in the first case, with Europe, yeah, the, the users were in DNN. And the second case, we did another experiment where the users were in the other framework. Now, what did we use in the other, uh, on the other side? That was called rsp.net boilerplate and open up. Now, uh, for the regular under us, the open up, if the word open is there, Sasha uh, Trowan is uh, involved. Um, we'll explain that a little bit later. I'm calling this boilerplate now, from now on, just uh, uh, because I, I wanted to take this opportunity of, this, uh, of these sessions to introduce you to, to this uh, uh, platform that uh, I think it was Sasha who came across it. Um, and uh, which we are very fond of. We're, we're using it regularly now. Um, um, so, you, what what is it? It's a, it's an application framework. It's not a CMS, absolutely not. Well, it's can't even uh, can't even really call it a framework. It's more just boilerplate. It's just code. Uh, it's very well documented. 
It has a strong architectural model based on uh, DDD, domain driven design. Uh, and it has all the, it really tries to implement all the best practices and all the best practice patterns that there are available at the moment. Uh, and again, it's well documented, so that's really nice. It's really f feature packed and it has a very act it's open source and it's a very active community. Well. Um, you can't see that. Uh, does anybody can tell me the shortcut to zoom in? I uh, saw so people do that. Uh, no? Windows plus plus. Sorry? Windows plus plus. Windows and a plus. Right, that works. Um, and that's fine. <laughs> and Windows minus minus. <laughs> <laughs> No, you can't, uh, can't read it. Huh? Um, so, but it's a typically layered... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's so, the typical uh, uh, front-end, which can be anything, as you see, and then... Uh, uh, MVC, uh, which you can, uh, which we all also use, but we use just to, uh, as I shown in uh, in DNN, to start up uh, some um, some uh, single page application. Um, you have the yeah, come on. Distribution service layer, you have an app application layer, you've got a domain layer, uh, infrastructure layer, uh, all very well, uh, very well documented. Um, this, uh, as I said, it's open source, but there is the free version and the paying version. Just want to give you a little bit of an overview of, of how this, uh, this is structured, uh, this website and this, uh, this, uh, this tool. So the uh, free startup uh, project, it, uh, there's a button and you, you click on it and you can uh, uh, can maybe I can just show it to you. It makes it a little bit more vivid. Mm. Uh, let me, uh, maybe I was a little bit too fast. Let me just uh, show you a little bit um what what the end result what the end result is so this is the dnn website uh, uh when the user logs in um this module which is a uh, which is the razor host module it will uh, call uh, bootstrap the spa application uh, insert the user ID and the language, so all the things that are needed for the other application to to uh, know uh, what it, what it needs, some state that it needs, and um, and then this this user gets to see this uh, this form. But this form is is a spy application that is uh, actually running on the other uh, other application. Another other URL. Um, it's a complete.
I hope I have internet. Didn't test that. Yeah. So it's um, this is the multi-tenant uh, looks like that with registration or without registration, and if you log in as administrator, you um, get this uh, this view it's completely. Um, responsive, it has an admin section where you can manage the tenants, the user, the roles, languages, uh, some feature here, not everything is enabled. Um, and it's here that we uh, do the development of the, of the module. So this is the, this is the S SPA module that we just bootstrapped in, uh, in, in DNN. Uh, same here. Here the, the shop is being created, but since the users are uh, this time not in, um, in DNN, the, um, I don't know if that's going to work. Um, the user has, has to uh, log in, it does a, an authentication towards the other websites, and uh, and then we'll see the form. Uh, although I don't have a at the moment a username that has any uh, that's real customer. Um, sorry. Let's <laughs> no. where am I here? Now, this, what you see here, is not completely what, uh, um, what you get if you create a new project. If you create a new project, you can, uh, they will generate a new project for you, where you can choose, okay, do I want ASP.NET Core or still uh, MVC5? Uh, you see some options that you have there. Uh, recently, they added the Vue.js. It's not the one that we use. Um, so we started with the uh, with this one, the MVC, and there we integrated uh, Vue. But you've got also an Angular uh, version if you want. Uh, so this framework, it, it's a bits uh, uh, structured the same as, as DNN, so they have, a, they have some core modules and then they have a, um, one application where uh, you, can, uh, you can pay uh, you can pay and then you get a lot more interfaces, so that's something that we are used to from Evoke. Um, but we haven't used this one yet. Uh, we uh, still use the, the free version, and that means you get all the functionality, but not all the interfaces. So I think uh, And so what about open up, which I already mentioned? It's uh, Sasha Troan's take on a, a ASP.NET boilerplate. Basically what he created is a, a web application, he calls it a web application starter platform. It's also open source. It has this ABP uh, component, but added or changed the skin that was used there uh, with a, a different skin, Core UI. Added Vue.js 2 and uh, Vue.js components element UI. The end result is that you have two starter projects, Visual Studio starter project, one MVC version and one uh, Vue.js version. 
uh, where the ABP are just nuggets um, and uh, so the, the structure of the Visual Studio project is a little bit different which makes that the, the core components are much easier to, uh, to update. Um, so it's uh, easier to start a project uh, and he added several other uh, um, stuff in there to, to increase productivity, uh, for example, uh, to, uh, to build uh, CRUD pages. Um, okay, let's me... Huh? So, uh, let me just have a brief moment. Uh, are there any questions already? Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, when you also do the same as Angular, uh, and you put two modules with an Angular compilation built in it, then you have to do some workarounds to not load the uh, library, the JS file, twice. Not twice, because uh, especially when you have pre shaking in it, they're not the same, so you can't eliminate uh, the easy one. Are there also the same problems with these solutions if you put two modules? On the same page? Uh, I don't know that for sure. I'm looking at Sasha. Uh, um, I don't think so. um, this is based on UES. UES is, is really just uh, picking up a, a div in the, in the page and run the, the, the app on that div. So you can have a multiple uh, divs running in multiple. UGS apps on the same page, you know the problem. They don't need scripts then. They don't need compiled scripts. Uh, or the compi uh, compiled scripts that have to be loaded. They don't uh, depend on that. So, yes, yes, they do. They you have a, uh, so all your application is compiled into one or maybe the most two uh, JavaScript files. Uh, but uh, would they interfere with each other? Um, well, I haven't tried it, so in that sense I, I can't uh, be sure, but I, I don't think, think that was, that's a... Uh, no, and the, the, the big difference, uh, the big difference, I don't know if it's any, any use here, but uh, Angular is a, is a framework, uh, so it's, it's much bigger, it has much, uh, much more stuff there, uh, while with Vue just a library, so you probably could it also would all, if there was a problem you would it would be easier to uh, to solve it. It bootstraps in the same way as, as React. No? Yes, so it's very similar. You you have a, a method where you can do a for each div with that class. I will now inject my app on that div, and then you can put of course identifiers on your div and the div and the data attributes to distinguish between which div you're actually handling, which is what I usually do for my React apps, to make sure that multiple React apps on the same page can be served by the same JS file, doing all the magic. Yes, I think in, in, in Angular, you, it's at compile time that you tell which div is issued. Is well, in, in Angular, uh, <coughs> if you use, don't use the CLI, uh, but with new CLI builds, they have uh, because it was a bit heavy on the build files, it is, they added tree shaking and stuff, so that he only takes the parts from the <coughs> models you use uh, in the actually build. So if you have two applications, tree shaking from the two application builds is not the same, no. but they have the file the same name, so it doesn't mm. work. Uh, no, it has the same name, but it's a different pass. Yeah, but the molecules and stuff. Uh, it's already pre bundled uh, yeah, for a programmer to a pre-bundled uh, file, and for the second one too, so, so they are not very better, even if they have the same name, but uh, not uh, the same uh, pass. Yeah, but, uh, okay. So we, we have fixes for it also. But Any other questions for now? Oh. Uh, well, I'm going here like a train. Um, the, I had some slides on the, uh, because uh, Vue.js is not something that you uh, hear a lot of. Uh, it's just a little bit small brother, but it looks, it's very similar to React actually. Um, so, 
uh, it's only uh, it's only a view, view layer. So uh, Vue.js itself, it's only a view layer. If you need a router, you need an extra library. If you need state management, you need an extra library. Um, it has a the similar philosophy as React as a, in a one way uh, a data flow. So you have state, and the state will be will make sure it will be the the source of the of what is going to be rendered, then you change the state and then you render it again. Um, and uh, they they can both be used with uh, with other other libraries. Uh, the difference is Vue is more uh, template based. So uh, although it also supports JSX uh, and even lit HTML and stuff like that, uh, the default config is that you write uh, uh, templates. Um, the e its ecosystem is smaller than, than React, and that's for sure. Uh, and uh, their, the React team tries to push innovation on all and every possible level, while Vue is, a little, is more conservative in that sense, and it, uh, it likes to build on existing and uh, and standardized uh, technology. And React has a React Native and Vue has weeks, but uh, not sure if that ever will, uh, will be mature. And uh, well, that can be a, a disadvantage for some uh, people. So, uh, what I wanted to show you in this gentle uh, introduction is that, uh, well, sometimes you have the impression that DNN is there forever, and in there are there are good reasons to, to sometimes have that feeling because it really is a, a very strong, uh, strong tool. Uh, but uh, uh, for serious software development, yeah, there the better approaches are are becoming. Uh, um, possible now. Uh, so it's a, uh, is it a ABP and open app and alternative for DNN? No, n as, absolutely not as CMS. Uh, so it's, um, but for software development and module development, for us it's been really very, uh, very valuable. Uh, we, um, it's, uh, it, uh, for us the, the, the stability towards the future is uh, uh, we experience it at, at much bigger, um, and the combination really uh, is easy and works well. So in the next session, although I <laughs> probably could <laughs> smash it to all the two together uh, at this pace, uh, uh, I'm going to look more in depth into uh, to open up and install it, uh, see how the code is working. Uh, um, and tell you a little more about uh, hosting uh, .NET Core. Uh, Questions, please. Uh, you gave two uh, examples, two websites, and in the first one, you the users and yeah. the DNN, and the second one, you skipped in the my uh, pa uh, part, was which uh, option do you prefer? Oh. Uh, my conclusion is that DNN is, uh, if we start working like this, then DNN becomes back, becomes uh, uh, CMS again, and the application framework part goes to somewhere else. Um, so that means that the, the content manager needs to log into DNN, but the users normally don't. Uh, need to edit the content, will uh, log in to, uh, to, the, to the application. And uh, so in that sense, the, the second approach uh, is, the, is the most favorable one uh, for us. Uh, and it's what Mitch said this morning here, because his uh, setup was very similar and and of course, then you have these two database of users, and and for the content manager, also wants to uh, once in a while uh, do user management, so he has to go the other way. But uh, nowadays, with especially because it's all if you client side is all 
uh, JavaScripts. You, 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 can even, you could even, if you, can't, if you don't want to solve it with hyperlinks, um, you could even uh, give them a, yeah, a completely integrated uh, look and feel. Uh. So you don't uh, use, uh, if you have the users on the DNM side, you cannot control security for the uh, app side. Uh, yeah, so you can just yeah. say you know, show it or show it not, but uh, don't uh, set the permissions for the users in the uh, uh, ABP uh, open app side. Yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I disagree, that's not correct. Yeah. I mean, uh, you can uh, transfer a black token or something like that to the other website to guarantee that uh, you got the right user connected. Okay. Yeah, true. Uh, Um, but uh, yeah, in our experience, don't, it's, it's not very useful. Uh, yeah, we don't use it very much. But if you have to, yeah, you it's can. Uh, possible. Yeah. But I'll Hold on, uh, you're um, How is the, the data exchange working between the, the DNN system and the other system? So, for example, it's just injecting HTML code from the other system no. inside the pages, or is there are there any APIs to get all the objects? Yes, the second approach. So it's it's completely uh, uh, so it's really it's really this approach. Okay. Yeah? Like in Mitch, Mitch example where he has all the products in a separate system and um, the product of uh, the system offers some some web API and you can query products for example. Yeah. Okay. Then my question would be I think you come to a point where you for example want to link products to pictures to images. Then the question is, should I store then the images inside the DNN in the asset management, or is it maybe better to store the images in the other system because maybe in an administrative UI you want to link images to products. So yep. I think then maybe you have to move the images to the other side. Yeah, and then I think, then I think basically you're saying also with applications, there might at some point uh, be a content aspect um, and and then what? Then you get content management also there. Uh, uh, yeah, for me it's it's the the the, the typical websites, the public facing websites uh, is is most of the time marketing content, uh, and the indeed the products uh, would uh, would store the pr the image of the product. I would keep close to my to my applications as they are part of that domain. Because then my next question would be: okay, I could imagine a point where you then have to, for example, if you have an e-commerce system, then you have maybe customer groups, and then you have to link your users to the customer group, and then link the customer group to the products, and then you are um, at the point where you maybe also move the customers and the users. Into other but the, the, for me, the users and the, the the users are already in the. In, in one of the use cases. Yeah, in, and that's my preferable. That's what I would do every time. Okay, and then, then my next question would be: Okay, what what is left on the other side? <laughs> not not much, not then much. Then and is it a bit radical, but then it's just static HTML, oh, JavaScript. Oh. Yeah, it, it was it, Mitch was evolving to the same thing. At one point, you can say, "Okay, then I just need a WordPress with two plugins, and and, and we are done." We, because the content management as aspect of of DNN is uh, is not that valuable anymore in in, in current market. Eh, in my so so indeed, it becomes very thin. Maybe it's easier to migrate to .NET Core then, and then, and then you can get everything together again. Because if you then have a site where the content doesn't change very often, then even from a performance side of view, it would be the best if it's just static HTML, and then um, the, the, the site would have passed it. Yeah, I can I can tell you that's already a little bit for the for the next session for me. I mean, there is so much, I mean, I, I call it feature pack. There are so much features in this platform. The next thing I'm going to do if, if needed, because there is, at the moment, there is no content management aspect in ABP. It's not there. But, but, what, but, what but you can 
create it, and, and then you, you almost have a... Yeah, but do you have an example about what, what you missed then in, in the other platform? Like, I could now imagine, don't know the platform, but if you want to create a news page, and maybe in the other system no. you could create a news object with some properties, but the, and then... But the, the, the big difference is, in ABP, it's a developer who is, who is in control. So there is no concept of content management who, where you've got an interface to create pages or... So if a page needs to create it, you have now in ABP, you open up Visual Studio and in the object of, of the pages, you, you type in this new page. So it's, there, it's no content management system at all. It's just, a, it's just code. If I understand that correctly, ABP is just uh, a bigger template than what you get in Visual Studio open create new project. Yes. Right. So it's a new, yeah. it's a full standalone application. Yes. That's it. That's it. With the. Uh, so where, where is the value of that? I, I don't really see the value. Uh, in the, the, the prices that I've been checking here, uh, you can. Oh, the, but the the value of the the prices. Uh, no, I. No, no, the value on on using that approach and being and tying yourself down to a product no, by this company? No, no, it's, uh, you're not, you're, you're just, I mean, this is, I mean, this is a different, clearly an approach for developers. Yeah, we're talking here about the 20%, mm -hmm. uh, so we're talking about developers who, um, who want to see their code, and, and you, indeed you have a code base, it's in, very similar to, to a very big template, sure. Uh, but it, it has it all. I mean, that's for the next session. The, there is all, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's very feature, feature complete. Yeah? Uh, scheduling, event bus, uh, you name it, everything that we also have in, in the NN, it's, it's also there, but it's it just code. And then what they sell, like a thousand five hundred or whatever, that's just the interface they then try to sell to people. But we yeah. as developers are not going to pay anything for an interface, but we can build that. Right. And that's the point. Uh, sorry, he was. The independent, independent of DNN, yeah. Okay, I was just saying independent, but also miss, uh, uh, the you know, you have the settings, uh, the settings. Yeah, but that we, we s I mean, I was talking about Razor host as the, uh, as the host of the, but actually, actually I use open content for that, and there I have, I have settings which I can integrate with, uh, with, uh, when bootstrapping the the, the module, the, the spa. Peter, you had a... Yeah, no, I, so I was triggered by a comment you made earlier. You said when the, in, in DNN it gets fairly complex when you start building out larger applications and you end up making multiple modules to do different parts of an application, which I think is something for anyone who's, who's done um, uh, larger applications on DNN will have run into that. And um, yeah, just want to make a comment that what I do nowadays, my pattern is choose the MPC pattern, where I have a setting for which view I'm going to start with for a module. So that I can actually use the same module everywhere, but I just tweak in the settings, like, okay, this one starts with, for instance, the, the contrast module is that done, done that way. So there's one view of just the sessions, right, the schedule, and it's, it's in a, in a specific directory and in the settings it will just read all the views that are there so okay I want that one okay and then next one that one and still all of the MVC will still work in each one of those modules mm -hmm. if I you know go to slash uh, you know contrast or slash edit slash one then yeah you get into the edit of that specific contract no. that's a, it's, it's a way to uh, to tackle the um, um, large complexity uh, applications no.
Sorry, Jan. Yes, it's just C sharp. Okay, but the data structures has to be created by a developer yes. using Visual Studio. Yeah. And then when it's then deployed, then the the content editor is able to fill in data within uh, this structure. Con content editor, we're not talking about content editor of DNN, eh? uh, because it has nothing to do with DNN. It's a complete different so you create a you create a data structure, yeah. and then uh, with uh, Open App, it would be easy to create a CRUD page for that uh, with filters and so, because you need an interface. You have to build your own interface for for that. So translations, for example. Yeah. So it's it, it really it does nothing, while uh, while DNN does very much. This does nothing. Okay. And now imagine the use case you want to create news in this uh, ABP. The developer creates the structure, news with headline and text, and then how much work is it to create the CRUD pages to enable someone yeah. to enter? Now, now news. That's uh, uh, news that sounds really as content in the sense that there is no much interaction with. It's just it's just data to store to view, and and at this point in time, open open up of two sick uh, will be much faster. I, I mean, there is no need as a developer to to put it in there, to put it in ABP to create it in ABP news. Eh? I mean. You see? But can you force your content editors to do the news on the DNN platform? And if they want to change their products, they have to go to another part of the mic? Um, uh, yes, because the, the, the content editors, they are it's their task, they are uh, sitting at the desk and say, okay, it's my website, what will I do with my content? So that's a completely other domain. Here we, uh, here we are talking about external users who in some case want to, uh, to buy something or in other case want to register for an event. So, so that's, that's more an application. Yeah, yeah but news, uh, uh, a smaller customer has news and shop products. It's the same person, maybe, who does the the management, the management of the of the yeah 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 yeah. So and true, absolutely. Um, uh, but uh, well, that's that's just a hyperlink. Okay. Yeah? And and even if it was really a problem, which uh, customers don't mind. I, I mean, there's a reason why you do it like that. You explain it so. So, but even that could be solved by creating an interface. But then, then, what are you? But then you're switching between hyperlinks. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And by the way, this is all because DNN is not DNN is not on .NET Core. Eh? I mean, that's that's why we do this. Eh? It's not. So it's uh, once that DNN is on on the .NET core platform, then, then we can start, then we don't have to use this approach. Uh, well, uh, it, it depends on, I mean, for me that's, that's absolutely no issue, uh, glasses, in the sense that, um, uh, nowadays, the websites are they, a lot of them have uh, have big uh, big white uh, banners, and this is now really big white paints or space, and 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 look and feel. It's just CSS, um, so so no, I I did not. Uh, Come across as a uh, as a problem that no. Okay. Any other questions?
No. Okay, then uh, I want to thank you very much for your uh, attention.